Good morning. It's lovely to be here at Camberwell this morning, and I'm not quite sure that I'm even going to try and compete with Alan. No? Certainly has a way of um, keeping us all awake and alert, doesn't he? Well, when we look around our world, there is quite a bit to be thankful for, but there's also quite a bit to distress us. Much perhaps that could overwhelm us. Conflicts in a variety of places. I haven't heard about uh, the Ukraine-Russia conflict for quite some time. It's still happening, but it's just been taken over by another conflict. Many of you probably didn't hear about the, the, um, too much about the earthquake that happened in Afghanistan that displaced so many vulnerable people or about the continued fighting or conflict that's happening in Myanmar. There are, um, you know, we've had Salvation Army officers and congregations have to move and hide even in the last 10 days in order to avoid um, being killed. Conflicts in a variety of places, innocent civilians being caught up in those conflicts, natural disasters, concerns about the extremes in weather, the desperate desire for some summer sun in Melbourne. Um, on an individual level, it's already been referred to, hasn't it? Many people are struggling with the cost of living. The lack of housing in Australia, I'm not sure if you're aware how desperate we are for more housing. So many people living in cars, couch surfing, people even who have incomes but have, had, have been required to exit their rental and there's just nowhere else for them to get accommodation. So they're living with families in cars. This is Australia. This is the world in which we live. That growing mental health epidemic, particularly among our young people. It's actually quite scary. Many people in our world are not just looking for hope, they're desperate. They're desperate for hope, for a future that is more positive and for a capacity to be more resilient. I was reminded earlier this week that the passage in Isaiah 64 expresses that same kind of desperation. And it says in that first verse of Isaiah 64, I'd actually encourage you to read it when you go home. Um, it's, a, it's a request that God would tear open the heavens and come down. They were desperate for God to act, for God to intervene in their world. Tear open the heavens and come down, the prophet said. They wanted a Messiah, desperate for a saviour, desperate for the hope that they held to become a reality. Well, that was 500 years or so before the birth of Jesus. But 2,000 years ago, when Jesus was born, normal, everyday Jews yearned for the same kind of thing as many of our people out there today yearn for hope to become a reality, a positive change in circumstances, a capacity to be more resilient and cope with what was being thrown at them through life. For the Jews, their religion, their religion was burdensome. It was legalistic. It was marked by what they couldn't do rather than by what they could. And subsequently, that impacted their day-to-day -day living. You know, only allowed to walk so many paces on a Sabbath day. They couldn't help someone in certain circumstances because the law said you couldn't. The Roman occupation of their land was often oppressive and cruel. The people yearned for freedom, for positive change. Their hope, like the prophet before, was in a Messiah one who was promised through their scriptures, who they understood would bring about freedom and enable them to flourish as a people once again. Human nature is the same. We yearn for hope. We see the mess 
and we want an intervention. We crave that things would be different. Well, into that environment of the Jews yearning for a different future, into that environment of hoping that God would stand on the promises that he'd made to his people sooner rather than later, into that environment, God acts. And he does it quite miraculously, but very simply. Hope is born in the form of a baby boy, Jesus. Now, if we go back again to Isaiah, just a few centuries, in Isaiah chapter 7 and verse 14, God gives King Ahaz of Judah, the southern kingdom, a sign that he would keep his word to his people and that King Ahaz's nation, Judah, would not be overcome by the northern kingdom who joined forces with Syria. And that sign we read in Isaiah chapter 7 was that a virgin would conceive a son and the child would be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. Now, we do not know who that specifically refers to in the Old Testament, but the sign was given to demonstrate that God is with his people and with the line of David and that he would keep his word despite his people's unbelief. God said he would keep his word regardless. Step forward into the New Testament and Matthew the writer of the Gospel of Matthew, interprets that scripture, that very scripture in Isaiah, as the fulfilment of the prophecy, of a prophecy in the birth of Jesus. Hope born in the form of a baby boy. Now, the word, the prophecy, the verse, the incident, the birth of that baby served its purpose in Isaiah's day. But Matthew sees a greater purpose in pointing to the Messiah, realised in Jesus, the one who would save his people from their sins. Matthew sees this promised blessing of God with us, this promised blessing of Emmanuel as hope and as encompassing everyone, all people who would believe in him and trust in him. Now, we know that through the sacrifice and death of Jesus, um, and his resurrection, that we can experience hope every day in our lives. The reality of the presence of God, we know that that's available to us in Jesus and all that that comes with, joy, we sang about it this morning, and peace, that removal of sin and guilt and the burden of failure that so many carry with them. This blessing of Emmanuel, God with us, is hope being declared for humankind. And it's not just for a special few, but it's for all who would believe. At his birth, the angel declared, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. Good news of great joy for all people. All people, everyone. This provision, this hope is for all people if they would only believe. So, hope for a future where God is present with us. In the mess, in the mess, and life can get pretty messy. In the challenge, I only had to listen to what Alan experienced yesterday, and I thought, how are you still standing today? In the routine, in the humdrum, you know, when things just don't change. God is with us in those days as well. It's hope for a future where no one is excluded from the invitation, where the provision to know the intimate provision of God in our own lives is made and only dependent on our willingness to accept it by trusting that Jesus has saved his people from all that prevents such a relationship with God. Hope that God has me in his hands. 
and he makes me right with him. That is a hope that went way beyond the bounds of the expectations of the Jewish people when they were so desperate for a Messiah, for a saviour. They were expecting a saviour that would um, free them from physical oppression. But the one who was born, Jesus, would save his people while they were in their oppression. While they were experiencing their challenging and difficult circumstances. Perhaps while they were experiencing circumstances which in themselves seemed absolutely hopeless. That's the miracle of the hope that is available to us in Jesus. The promise was Emmanuel, God with us. The possibility of knowing the intimate presence of God even in situations that seemed hopeless in and of themselves. And that promise becomes hope with the reality of God's active presence in our lives. See, Emmanuel, God with us, changes our perspective. A life knowing God is present gives us a very different perspective to one where we're not sure if he's around or not. Emmanuel, the presence of God can colour even seemingly hopeless situations with a divine and a compassionate presence which changes us. By his presence, Emmanuel grants strength and courage and resilience. He provides an anchor point for us, an immovable centre. That's been my experience. I pray that it's yours as well. A little boy, eight or nine, in uh, one of the states of Australia, is in the foster care system. And his father died quite tragically while in prison. And his school colleagues, for want of a better word, found out about this and teased him mercilessly. Drew horrible pictures. But this young boy had a relationship with the core officers at the local church. And after school on that particular day, he just went to an after school activity and the CO sat down with him and said, how are you going mate? He said, I didn't have a very good day. And he, they had a little chat about it. And then the, the young boy said, but you know, I knew I was coming here after school and I knew you loved me and I know God loves me. So I was looking forward to that. This young boy had a hope of someone who loved him, who reflected the love of God to him. You know, that young child, just in the last couple of months, is so grounded in his understanding of who God, who he, how much he's loved by God, that the, he's been doing some work around the community. The community are looking to give him an award. This is just in the last few months. What a change for this young boy who's got this tragic family history but knows he is loved by God and that that love is reflected through the lives of some significant people in his life. This incarnation of Jesus, God became man and dwelt among us, is hope declared. Unfortunately, many to whom Jesus had been sent did not recognise him as the hope that had been promised to them. He didn't fit the image. Those in authority were threatened by his miracles and by his teaching and by his divinity. They envisaged someone made in their own image, just like them, with their values and their traditional approaches and so they rejected Jesus and in doing so, rejected the hope that he was offering for a new relationship with God, based not on words and on the law, which had oppressed his people for so long, but based on a work of God that would change the heart. In Jesus, God has provided for us the means to live in hope and to live with hope. That means is the presence of God himself with us. 
It's like Darren said early on. There's the hope and there's the reality. And, and they live in tension. We have the hope already. It's a reality. But we live in hope as well and with hope for what God is going to continue to do in and through us and in our world. You know, some may wish to look elsewhere because um, this way to find hope doesn't fit in with their expectations, just like the Pharisees and the religious leaders in Jesus' day. It may seem just too simplistic. Trust in Jesus who came to save his people from their sins. Some may resist accepting this offering of hope revealed in Jesus because they think they can find their own way through the maze of life. Our social programs are littered with people who thought they could find their own way through the maze of life. And one of the incredible opportunities we have is to point them to Jesus as one who brings hope and a purpose. You know, others, perhaps those living with a sense of despair and hopelessness, many of whom do access our services. Some perhaps who come through these doors on a, on a regular basis or when you have services here. Maybe some of those just need someone who's already experienced this hope to help lift their heads and their eyes so they can catch a glimpse of what God is offering them. Someone needs to tell them. Someone needs to show them. Those of us who already have this hope, that's our responsibility. That's our privilege. Someone has said you can live without love, but you cannot live without hope. I want to declare today that hope is available to all because of Jesus because of this birth of a baby boy 2,000 years ago, Emmanuel, God with us. When we experience that presence of God with us, we not only experience hope, but we, we experience all that God brings us, his love, and nothing, nothing the scripture tells us can separate us from that. What a promise, hope given to us, in the form of a baby. What a reality for those of us who trust in Jesus. We live in hope. We live with hope. God has us in his hand, in the mess, in the challenge. We experience it now and we look forward in the future to God revealing more and more of himself and his purposes for our world. And like, like the prophet in Isaiah 64, we continue to pray, oh, that you would tear the heavens and come down. He already has in the form of the baby Jesus who became our saviour. But we pray that God would continue to intervene in those areas of conflict that he would bring peace, yes? That somehow he would work his miracle as the almighty God, as the prince of peace and bring peace uh, to those parts of our world which desperately need it, but also to those individuals who crave, in our community, who crave hope. May we represent that hope in our living and in our interactions with others that they might know this hope and this purpose which is found in Jesus.